Hey, 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 Dr. Pinesett here, the pre-med productivity expert. And this week, I'm telling you guys about my weirdest anatomy experience in medical school. So you guys can get a sense of what it's like to be in an anatomy lab in a medical school <laughs> and give you guys a little peek in uh, to medical school. All right. Um, before we get to that, I always like to introduce myself. If this is your first time encountering me. Like I said, I'm Dr. Andre Pinesett. I'm the pre-med productivity expert. I'm an expert in medical school admissions and an expert in education and learning and helping you be a more efficient studier. And that's what I bring to you is some of my strategies and systems here on YouTube. And I would encourage you guys to check out my website, premedproductivity.com, because I have full length courses that go into much greater depth and really take all the confusion out of the process of getting yourself to medical school and improving yourself as a studier. All right, so today I'm telling you guys about my medical school experience in the anatomy lab and the kind of weirdest experience I had in the anatomy lab. And I went to Stanford Medical School and we have an amazing um, anatomy lab. We had some amazing English uh, anatomy professors who were actually from England and who wrote um, a major anatomy textbook and they've been there for forever, they're super old. But it was just interesting, these guys, and so I learned the esophagus, like they, they talk about things, and so, like they pronounce things entirely different uh, than we do as Americans, and so it was kind of an interesting experience, the esophagus, the umbilicus, right, things like that, instead of the umbilical cord, like umbilicus, it's umbilicus. Um, but if you've ever been in an anatomy lab, let's kind of break it down how anatomy class works. Um, the first part of anatomy is the lecture. So there will be some form of lecture-based curriculum brought to you where you sit down and you have lecturers who walk through slides, um, who walk down through the skeleton, and who talk to you about the anatomy and teach you about the anatomy and the attachment points and more of the functional things. Um, and then you back up that component with going to the actual anatomy lab. And in the anatomy lab, you will either do there's prosections and dissections. And you may have heard this term, and especially for people who are trying to decide between medical schools, you hear, okay, should I do prosection or dissection? I guess that's something we can talk about in this video. Um, but prosection means that the bodies are already dissected. So they're dissected and they're kind of uh, dried out. And so that way they preserve and they reuse these bodies over and over again. And so instead of having to actually dissect down through the tissues and isolate everything, it's already isolated for you by professional people. And then you just go look at it. Um, the other type is dissection, where you actually do the dissections yourself. And so you're going to hear these terms on the medical school trail. And so that way you know what the difference is. And people argue about the validity of each one. Um, and in my opinion, <laughs> I, I would say the pro section is actually better. And you're not going to hear that from a lot of people. Most people are going to say you want to dissect. But the reality is, is you're going to spend a lot of time dissecting to structures in anatomy lab instead of actually studying. And this is an important distinction. When you're cutting through tissues, when you're doing all this dissection, you're not actually learning the structures because you're cutting. And people can say, oh, well, you're cutting through the tissues, you're going to learn the blah, blah. It's like, that's not going to be what the test is because the test is already going to be dissected out for you. And oftentimes, actually, even schools that do dissection, so Stanford did dissection, we would do prosections for the exam. Does that make sense? So, because they already want, they want to professionally dissect it out so everything's very clear. With a live, like not a live, but with a wet, fresh dissection, the tissues kind of meld together. It's very wet and moist and slimy. All those things are going on. And so it's hard to actually identify the structures clearly. And so they use these um, desiccated bodies, these, these, these dried out bodies, that everything, the structures separate from themselves. And so you can see them very clearly. So they use those for the actual exam. And so what was interesting was you found people who were doing dissections and then going and looking at the prosected bodies because we knew that was what we were going to be tested on. And so I would encourage you guys to actually go to schools that have prosections because then you don't have to spend all the time in lab dissecting. You can just get right to it, see the structures, and actually spend the time actively learning and learning what's going to be on the test and seeing it in that modality. So that's my two cents on that. Now, for the anatomy experience, you're in the lab, you're doing these kind of things, and you'll spend a ton of time, whether it's prosection or dissection, you'll spend a ton of time around those bodies, getting used to seeing the structures, identifying things, and, and navigating around the body. And for me, like I said, I went to Stanford where there was a di we did dissections, and the weirdest experience I had in anatomy lab was actually, this is going to sound kind of weird, but there was two strange experiences. The first was when <laughs> we were... <laughs> We were dissecting the very first day. The very first day, 
we're dissecting and we start it with a leg. And the reason they have you start with a leg is because it's less kind of personal. It's not like, you know, uh, a human, you know, it's a human body. And maybe this is your first exposure to human body having to, you know, cut a body, which is kind of a crazy thing to think about, right? You're cutting this person who used to be alive. Uh, and often these bodies are donated um, by family members. And that's an awesome thing to, to donate your body to science. Uh, but so we start with the leg and it was really, really interesting to see because as soon as we started like pulling out the uh, materials and the saws and the scalpels to start cutting, um, and in my group, there were four of us. And one of the girls, as soon as we started cutting, we literally just cut right through the first uh, set of skin. And these bodies are preserved. They put different chemicals, I don't know what the exact chemicals are, but they put chemicals in to preserve the bodies. And so when you, they're like kind of like sealed in the skin. And so when you cut the skin, you kind of unleash all those chemicals and that smell. And so as all this is happening, right, you have all these bodies being opened up, the room starts to fill with the smell. And so one of the uh, girls in my group gets that kind of aroma and it overwhelms her. And she goes to pass out. And as so often happens, this is how it happens in medicine. You never pass out gracefully. You never like, oh, just dainty fall like they do in movies. When you pass out in real life, it's always terrible, right? It's, it's, it's never like a smooth, genteel, graceful fall. It's awful. And she happened to actually start to, to pass out. And she was like stumbling, stumbling. I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? And we go to grab her. And before we can grab her, she stumbles back into the body behind us. And so she flopped back onto the body. Her face hit in the leg and the juices and all this kind of stuff in the body behind us. And I was like, oh my gosh, when she wakes up from this being passed out, she's not going to feel happy that she fell into the body juices um, on this anatomy table. And so we, we, the professor came over, we picked her up and we set her down and we woke her up and kind of wiped her off. And she was so embarrassed about it. And it was just kind of a funny situation. And we all laughed about it. Nobody judged her for it because it happens, right? And the people who are going to pass out in phlebotomy class, people who are going to pass out the first time in the hospital, all these things. So uh, I think the reason I thought this story was funny was because it's just, she freaked out about the smells and then fell into a body making it worse. And then she was so embarrassed about it for so long that I want to encourage you guys, don't be embarrassed. Stuff is going to happen. You're going to pass out. You're going to do whatever. Be prepared for that aroma. Be prepared for seeing the bodies, right? Know yourself. If you're a person who's, who's weak in the knees, sit down when all this is going on. But then also recognize that, hey, people do pass out. We are, even though we you see us as doctors and physicians and medical students, we're just human like you. And we experience things for the first time just like you. And I, I know a lot of people like to act cool, like, oh, I've seen everything and I'm so cool. But the reality is, is we get to that point from the point that you're at right now, where you're going to anatomy lab, you're in awe, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know any of the organs, you don't know how to learn it. And then you get to that point where you know it all and you're comfortable and, oh, bodies don't bother you, blood doesn't bother you, all these things don't bother you. And so I thought that was just like an interesting kind of <laughs> time to fall into the body. Don't let that be you. Because uh, that was like, man, that, was, that sucks. Um, and then another interesting experience I had in anatomy lab, which is not so much on the funny side, but just kind of the interesting side when you think about it, is that these are real bodies, right? People who were alive and whose families donated their body to science. And so you try to be as respectful as you can. And it's, it's an interesting uh, experience because... This is often, you start this right when you start medical school, a lot of places. And so you're new to medicine. You don't really know the medicine yet. And yes, you've had clinical experience, but really being around bodies is not something you've done, especially a dead body. Most people have not been around a dead body. And so the way we dissect, I mentioned we start with the leg and kind of move our way up the body and we do the torso and the head last because A, it's, it's complex, but also because it's more of the human element. And so the hands and the face are actually the last two things you do. And what I found so interesting was two things. It, was, it, it, it really put things in perspective was that we were dissecting the hand and I was like, man, this looks like a real hand. Like you could shake the hand and, and it was a real hand and we dissected it out, but it was just, it was a weird thing to see someone's hand. It was like outstretched out of the drape, reaching out towards me. And it was just like, it was an interesting phenomenon. And then when we got to the face and we had to dissect the face and the head, it, it was kind of a roadblock for me. I, I, I'll be honest with you guys, because... This is someone who used to be alive and you're dissecting their face and their head. And I know it's to learn, but it's still a very interesting scene where you're seeing their eyeballs and their tongue and you're seeing this person as they were, right? Because they have their expression. They're, they're, they're a person. And so you see all these things and you're cutting through these tissues and it's kind of a, 
I don't know, I was conflicted about it because I was like, man, I'm cutting into someone's face and into someone's head. This is a, a real live person, even though they're deceased. Um, and then I, I guess I moved past it, but it was, to me, it was a very, and I don't know, maybe some of you guys who've taken anatomy lab can relate to this and maybe you can comment in the box, but there are moments in anatomy where, you, where it gets very real, where you're like, man, I am, I'm becoming a doctor. I'm going to be treating patients. This is a real body. This is, it, it just makes things very real for you. I don't know. I think like that moment was real for me. Um, when I got my stethoscope, uh, our stethoscope ceremony was real for me. When I got my white coat, the first time I went in and did a, a real patient encounter was a, a, a crazy moment for me. Like all these landmarks you hit. And when I was dissecting the face and the head, I realized like, whoo, this is serious. This is my career. This is, this is my future. And so it just kind of brought it together. And I think the juxtaposition, because you dissect for all these months, the juxtaposition of that first day when my lab mate passed out to that last day when we're all there and we're we're not numb to it, but we're accustomed to it. It's our norm now. We're, we're physicians in training and we're dissecting this face out and we deal with complex emotional kind of possibly stressful situations and we handle it with grace and dignity. And even though we're dissecting this person's face, we do it respectfully. And at the end of that, that week, we did the dissection of the face. We actually invite the family members of all these uh, donor bodies to come in and we have a nice ceremony and we we feed them and we talk to them. We say thank you and we appreciate uh, their donation. And it's just a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so to, to kind of go that whole spectrum, you're going to have moments like this in your training as a physician, maybe even as a pre-med, you guys have already experienced this, but you're going to have moments that are key pivotal moments where you recognize, oh, I've come a long way or I have a long way to go or whatever it might be. So anyway, <laughs> that's what I have for you guys today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, take a second, like the video, and subscribe, guys. I'm live every Sunday, 4 p.m., answering your questions. New video every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. to answer your questions, give you guys a sense of what it is to be a doctor, and help you guys be better. This is not an entertainment channel. This is an education channel to help you guys be your best, and I hope to enlighten you guys every single week. And after you like and subscribe to this video, get over to my website, premedprotv.com, and get into a course. In my course, How to Dominate Premed and Medical School, the Definitive App, or the Definitive Guide, excuse me, um, I cover choosing a medical school, and I talk about all the different things you should weigh out when you're touring medical schools and how you should evaluate and look at them critically to find the right fit for you. So check that out, guys, and I will see you very soon on here. We are live every Sunday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.